Hidden San Francisco, the guide to lost landscapes, unsung heroes, and radical histories. Stop L1, Mission Dolores Cemetery at Chula Alley. After having passed by the Golden Gate for decades, the Spanish finally arrived at the bay in 1776, the same year that the United States declared its independence from England in the 13 colonies along the eastern seaboard. The Spaniards unconsciously encountered a well-maintained food paradise. The annual fire set on local hills and plains by the original peoples maintained a deliberately cultivated landscape of oaks, edible plants, and open meadows. The open spaces they created were ideal for hunting game, while the shorelines provided abundant sources of food. Like the rich alluvial wetlands of early civilization in Mesopotamia, the bay sustained a dense and diverse population in hundreds of small settlements, surrounded by an, an abundant environment from which it was easy to live. The first peoples of the Bay Area spoke dozens of languages and lived in dispersed communities in all parts of the area. They traded necessities and treasures back and forth, but in terms of measurable economic activity, they lived without money, markets, or private property, and yet lacked for nothing, while living in sophisticated societies of dense exchange. But the Spanish colonizers did not believe they were meeting civilizations with knowledge from which they could learn. On the contrary, the Spanish colonists and soldiers decided that the existing people here were extremely primitive and proceeded through religious conversion and forced labor to quote-unquote civilize generations of people and erase connections to their own land. Later anthropologists pejoratively categorized the California tribal peoples as diggers, observing the practice of foraging for roots as one food staple and decided the lack of fixed towns and sedentary agriculture was evidence of a lack of civilization. Chula Alley off Dolores Street provides a view of the last cemetery still extant inside San Francisco city limits. It is the original cemetery located at Mission Dolores, built in 1791 and home to a number of prominent early San Franciscans whose names still grace the city's streets, such as Noe, Guerrero, De Haro, and Leedsdorf. The thousands of Indians who perished in the early mission system were buried elsewhere, probably under today's intersection of Dolores and 16th Streets and to its north. And perish they did, because the Spanish missions were based on the brutal exploitation of Indian labor in what can only be called slavery. What began as an effort to extend and defend the northernmost claims of the Spanish Empire in Alta California eventually gave way to a highly romanticized Californio culture based on vast cattle ranches. The church's initial intention to convert local indigenous people into Spanish Catholic peasants, to whom they assigned the label neophytes, gave way to the imperative of pressing the same population into the workforce needed to run the ranches with their hundreds of thousands of cattle, sheep, pigs, and horses. As whalers and others came to the bay to resupply and repair their ships, a growing trade in hide and tallow took hold, fueling further the extension of the rancho economy in the decades after Mexico gained its independence from Spain. Livestock ranching was the primary activity on land from 1776 to the mid-1840s, and economy fully depended on a workforce of local Indian laborers. By the time historian Ira Cross was writing A History of California Labor in 1935, he could unselfconsciously write, quote, with secularization came the legal emancipation of the neophytes, but the change proved most unfortunate in not a few respects. Many of the Indians continued to suffer the lot of serfs, being treated as such by ranchers and others who had work to be done. Moreover, they refused to work either under the Padres or for them, insisting that they had been freed from all connections with the missions. The greater number of them wandered off and returned to their old ways of living. Frequently, they took with them the horses, cattle, and sheep of the missions, and in other ways helped themselves freely to the Padres' wealth and stores. Protest and supplication by the mission fathers were in vain. Their sixty years of patient effort and sacrifice in Christianizing and in teaching the Indians the more rudimentary of the useful arts were as so much wasted labor. End quote. He wrote that in 1935. The prevailing myth of the primitivism of the original inhabitants still informs most people's ideas about what they were like, so ignorant and helpless that their extermination was inevitable. 
Worse, it is commonly believed that their extermination was effectively accomplished in the 19th century, obliterating the 21st century reality of a resurgent native California claiming its own history and reminding the rest of us that its legacy is very much alive today. <laughs>